Welcome to Math with Mr. J. In this video, I'm going to cover the difference between greatest common factors and least common multiples. I do want to mention before I start with this that I have a video that goes more in depth about multiples and factors if you need more clarification on those. That link is down in the description. For this video, we have two examples that we're going to go through together in order to get this down. So let's jump right into number one, where we have 12 and 9. And we'll start with the LCM, which stands for least common multiple. And we'll need to write out the multiples of 12 and 9. So we'll start with 12. And remember, multiples, we need to multiply by integers in order to see what the multiples of 12 are. And we could do this by skip counting. So we can think, well, 12 times 1 is 12, times 2 is 24, times 3 is 36, times 4 is 48, and times 5 is 60. That's a good start there. If we start with, you know, four or five multiples, you don't need to do much more than that because multiples do go on forever. So you just need to start your list, do the other number, and see if you have any in common. Think about what least common multiple means. We take a look at the multiples and we find the least valued um, multiple that they have in common or share. So let's do nine now and see if we have any that match. So nine times one is nine, two is 18, three is 27, 36, and 45. So do we have any common multiples or do we need to continue our lists? Well, I see that we have 36 in common here and we want the least. So is there anything smaller in value that both of those multiple lists share? No, so the LCM or least common multiple is going to be 36. Let's move on to the greatest common factor between 12 and nine now. And we'll start by listing the factors of 12 and nine. Then we need to find the greatest one that they have in common or share. Remember, factors are all the numbers that the given numbers can be divided by evenly with no remainder. So all the numbers at 12 and nine can be divided by evenly with no remainders. Or you can think of factors as all the numbers that can be multiplied in order to get the given numbers. So all the multiplication facts that equal 12 and nine. I like to think of factors as all the numbers that can go into the given number. That is not the most mathematical or technical way of thinking about it, but it helps me uh, figure out what the factors are uh, when we're taking a look at greatest common factor. Let's start with 12. So when I write my factor lists, I like to start with two factors for every number. And those factors are one and the number itself, because we know that one can go into 12 and 12 can go into 12. Or if you like to think of these as multiplication facts that equal 12, well, one times 12 equals 12. So these are a factor pair. Now I put a gap in between one and 12 so I can fit all the other factors or numbers that go into 12 in between there and we'll have them listed in order. So 12 is even, so I know two is a factor. Two can go into 12 and two's partner is going to be six, right? Two times six equals 12. So six can go into 12 as well. Three and four is another factor pair for 12. Three can go into 12 and four can go into 12. Or we can think of it as three times four equals 12. Now those are all the factors of 12. So we can write our list for nine now. And we can start with one and nine. Put a little gap in between and then we can list our factors. So nine is, um, let me actually put, these are a pair there, so I'd like to connect them sometimes. And then three is also a factor. 
3 times 3 equals 9. 3 can go into 9. But we only need to list 1, 3. We don't need to put 2 there. So 1, 3, and 9 are the factors of 9. So once we have those lists of factors, we find the greatest one that both those lists share, what they have in common. So we can see that they have 1 in common, but we want the greatest. So anything greater? Yes, 3. So 3 is going to be the greatest common factor between 12 and 9. Now as far as spacing and writing out those factor lists, you'll get much better at those the more you do. So let's move on to number 2 where we have 20 and 15. So least common multiple first. So we'll write out the multiples for 20 and 15. So 20 would be 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. So you can start your list by writing out four or five, seeing if you have a match. If not, you can always continue lists because remember, multiple lists continue on forever. 15, we would do 15, 30, 45, and 60. And you'll notice that we have a match here. Always double check if you have anything that is smaller in value because remember, least common multiple. 60 is going to be the least that they do have in common, so that's going to be our LCM or least common multiple. Greatest common factor. We will write out our factor lists for 20 and 15. So we'll start with 20 here and 1 and 20. We know that 2 can go into 20 because 20 is even and 2's factor pair here or partner is 10. We also know 4 times 5 equals 20 or we can do 20 divided by 4 however you like to think of it so we know that 4 and 5 are also factors of 20. So those are all the factors of 20 now we need to list the factors of 15. So we'll start with 1 and 15. And then we also know 3 and 5 are factors of 15. Those are all the factors of 15 and 20. So now we need to find the greatest one that they have in common. And it's going to be 5. They both share 5 there, and that's the greatest one that they have in common. So that is our GCF, or greatest common factor. So there you have it. There's the difference between least common multiples and greatest common factors. I hope that helped. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, peace.